we're dining at the brand new Rosa Mexicano at Disney World's Dolphin Resort. Let's see. I'm Jay. And I'm Sam. You are watching the theme park movies, and we are back at the Dolphin Resort. Been here before, Sam, for Christie's birthday, my sister's birthday, to dine at Shula's. But there's a new restaurant here in town here at the Dolphin Resort. Where? R Rosa Mexicano. And yes. it just opened this week. And yeah. less than 24 hours ago, we were at Disney's other newest restaurant Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. I think this opened like the day before. Roundup Rodeo, oh, day, yeah, right. a day or two before Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. Now the Dolphin Resort is situated very close to Epcot. It's within, I would say, walking distance to yeah. Epcot and walking distance to Disney's Hollywood Studios. It is a sister resort of the Swan, so they usually are called the Swan and Dolphin Resort. And it's also home to Shula Steakhouse, which we have a video on. One of our favorite steaks in Disney. Looks very good. Yeah, Rosa Mexicano, though, is bringing the Mexican eats. Obviously, makes sense with the food. But there's an interesting story that goes along here, right, Sam? Yeah, so the uh, founder, Josephina Howard, she was a traveler, a chef, an interior designer. And although she was born in Cuba, she was very inspired by Mexican uh, culture and cuisine. So that's what she brought to life with this restaurant. She was the first chef to introduce fine dining Mexican to New York yes. in 1984. Yeah. So I kind of feel like special. Mexican is some of my, is like my probably my second favorite cuisine. We're yeah. also, we're originally we're from New York. We're big fans of Taco Bell, which is yeah. Tex-Mex. <laughs> Not actually Mexican cuisine. And we're originally yeah. from New York and that's where this place started. They, yeah. have, they have locations in New Jersey, Massachusetts, Connecticut, all over. And this is the first location in Florida. In Disney World, and I think from what I can see on the menu, what I've seen online, it looks like this may be some of the best Mexican food in Disney. I'm looking forward to it because La Hacienda, which was our favorite Mexican restaurant in Epcot, the one on the water, La Hacienda de San Angel, yeah. uh, we did not impress us last time. Yeah. Our favorite re restaurant in Epcot is now La Sayer because of that last experience. Yeah, and also today is National Cocktail Day, and supposedly their pomegranate margarita is like the Ooh. best in New York City. So if it's good enough for New York That's City, it's good for me. It's good yes. For me. Well, we've been to New York City. So I guess we're, we've been frequently there <laughs> quite a lot. So that would definitely make sense. I'm excited to try out the Mexican food. I am very hungry. So far, um, the dolphin is one for one. Shula's was great. So I'm excited to see what Rosa Mexicano brings to the table. Are you ready to go inside? Yes. And there's table side guac. Yes. Got to bring, so, bring in that table I'm, side guac. I'm sold. <laughs> if you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. Join us for the opening weekend. Weekend? Yes, Maybe? opening weekend of Rosa Mexicano. Just so you guys can see, this right here is the Dolphin Resort. Right across from it is the Swan Resort. And then they have the newest resort in the mix is, I believe they call this the Swan Reserve. Here there's like great rooms, fine dining there. And our friend Carly actually says that the Swan and Dolphin is her favorite place to stay at in Disney. Uh, it's owned by Marriott, actually. Now for both the Swan and Dolphin, they do have the friendship boats that go to both Hollywood Studios and to Epcot. Then... Or if you're staying at the boardwalk, it's convenient to just walk over here. For yeah. Dinner. Yeah, you could probably access all different dining. It's a convenient spot. Rosa Mexicano will be on the first floor of the Dolphin Resort. If you actually enter from like the parking area, so if you parked your car or valet parked your car, you actually walk in on the second level, which is where you could find Shula's. Uh, so you will have to go down a level if you walk in from the parking area. This giant fountain is actually on the first level right across from the Swan where you would get your boat access to Epcot or Disney Hollywood Studios. All right, let's actually head inside and check in. Rosa Mexicano actually is right past the fountain as well and right across from Todd English's Blue Zoo. Blue Zoo is another restaurant Sam and I really want to try out. As you walk up to check in, you can actually see Oh, you can validate your parking here, and you can see a portrait of Frida Kahlo right at the front. We are heading inside. A lot of Frida artwork. Oh, this is very nice. All right, so we've been seated. 
got salsa, Sam. And they came quick with that, too. And you have to pay extra for salsa at La Hacienda now. Salsa yes. just comes here. They just give you salsa. And such a stunning restaurant. Yeah, it's nice looking. I, I think I, I it's like beautiful. The swimming men behind me. <laughs> um, the the menu. Frida Kahlo artwork. Like yes. I just think it's gorgeous. The ma the menu. The, the menu are like very hard. Um, and then they have like the drinks right at the front. Pretty much everything is in there. Um, they are known for uh, their tableside guac, the drink that Sam's getting. I think also the quesadilla, right? Yeah. I'm gonna try out this salsa. It looks dark, usually dark and spicy. Mm. I feel like your shirt kind of matches the background. I would say that's a medium salsa. Very thin chip. Good for dipping though. It's like it's a, a sturdy chip. Yeah, it, it's tomato heavy. Or tomato four. Not very salty on the chips, and just like a little spice in it. Not salty anywhere, really. And we also got sparkling water. Um, I'm gonna give it an eight. No, you know I'm gonna give it a seven. I'm gonna go with seven for the salsa. Stay a little conservative right now. The flavor isn't blowing me out. It tastes very fresh. And the chips taste like they're very thin, not too salty. I think it's a solid, good salt. Salt, salt, salt. Serrano peppers, cilantro, onions. And this is a mortar pestle, but we call it a mojajete. That's the name in uh, Mexico. So we're gonna make a paste right here. It's so cute, right? <laughs> it's my favorite part. So Rosa Mexicano basically just means Mexican pink. That's what her name comes from. Mexican what? Mexican pink. Oh, alright. And I'm gonna go ahead and add one more cilantro, onions, and two tomatoes. I'm just gonna fold it in. We like our guacamole chunky here. The mojajeta really adds a lot of flavor to it. That looks great. It's a work of art. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'll be your work that make it for you. Thanks. What animal is this? I don't know. Right? I don't know either. It's cute. Maybe a little pig man. It kind of looks like a dog. Yeah. You, you can. Frank. Yeah, well, I don't think it's fried. Everything's fried. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can get bacon in it, too. Sam, you wanted to go a little less bacon. Well, I just wanted to try it without the bacon as well, so that's why I didn't want it all in yes. there. So they put it on the side for us. It's like a mix of cheese and bacon. And look at the spoon. The spoon says Rosa Mexicana. I've been having a hard time trying to get a focus on that spoon. but It's really, like, the presentation is really beautiful. She's a little... Try it just... Just a little... So yeah, it looks so fresh. Obviously, we, we we saw it be made, so we know it's fresh. When was the last time you saw tableside guac? We used to have it at yeah, Las Anah Vegas. Anahitos and Universal was probably the last time we've had it, and that was years ago. And you can make it to your liking, like you could do it mild, medium. Spicy. They say they like it chunky here. And you we, taste we like a chunky guac. You taste the onions. And the onions are very fresh. They're very... But it's not like an onion forward. I'm gonna try it with the bacon now. This is like a bacon and like a queso. Cojita cheese. Cojita cheese. I feel like you just call all cheese queso. That's the best table side guac I've ever had. It's better than uh, Antiquitos and, and Universal. Antiquitos, I would give an eight. I'm gonna give that a nine. With Antiquitos, to this, I feel like Antiquitos is more of a party yeah. experience. The atmosphere is a very, more and it's more like showy and flashy, like when they do things. And here, it's like a little more upscale, yeah. relaxed. 
five. The only thing I think, like, the chips are good, but maybe the chips could be a little bit better, but I'm not comfortable going to 10, but, like, that's probably the best table side. Like, if you like table side guac, you like guac, I highly recommend that. Who doesn't like table side guac? What? I said, who doesn't like table side guac? Well, I mean, some people maybe don't like guac, but I do, and that's probably some of the best I've ever had. All right, Sam got her drink while I was having the guac. Um, that's what one of the drinks they're known for, Sam, right? Yes, this is their signature drink since uh, 1984, the pomegranate frozen margarita. And it is National Cocktail Day, so I just felt like I kind of had to do this. Like, this reminds me of the glasses at Chili's. Yeah, they, yeah you're right, it does kind of look like that. There's a little salt on the rim. This is a very tiny straw. Wow. I think you're, maybe you're supposed to drink out of the salt on the rim. Strong? It's a little strong. It's not mixed that well yet. Like it's a little chunky, so it's kind of hard to drink right now. See how it's okay. like a big piece. So. I feel like I'm just like getting like the straight tequila that's kind of like yeah. at top because it just needs to be blended a little more. You want to wait to give it a number? Yeah, let me just like let it. We're going to come back to that happy. margarita. I feel like I'm just getting like straight tequila. Oh yeah, let's give, let's give it a fair shot. A fair shot. All right, so what do you think? I really like it a lot. It's very delicious. It's very, so it's better mixed. Yeah, I just needed to mix it a little. It was a little, it was a little too frozen, so I was just getting that tequila on top. But it's definitely made with like quality tequila, and the pomegranate is really nice. Like it's tart, but with like a little bit of sweetness in it. So it's really good. One to ten. I would go eight. I still think I like the avocado margarita in Epcot better, but it's like classic. Yeah, yeah, but it's still. Very good. I would get it again if I was here. All right, guava culotta. This was suggested to me by the, I believe, the assistant general manager, right? Yes. Um, and it comes not... with this uh, cinnamon stick right at the top. That's a big cinnamon yeah. stick. It's a mocktail. Taste that guava. <laughs> I would think in a guava culotta. It's not as sweet as you would anticipate. Um, but it's very refreshing. I'm not getting as much of the cinnamon as I thought I would, given there's a giant stick of it. I've never seen a cinnamon stick that big before. Is it a cinnamon it's stick? Cinnamon. Maybe it's just a piece of wood. No. I don't know. We'll have to look in the look in the book. This was the kind we just like winged it with that one. We didn't really know what it was. Real thing recommended. Yeah, so we're like, okay, yeah. yeah. It's good. I'll give it a seven. It's a salad. It's not as sweet as you would anticipate, though. Um, it has like a little kind of like almost sourness. I guess like the, the fruity flavor to it is the guava, but um, it's, it takes earthy. I think that's that's what makes sense with this stick. boy over here. A little <laughs> stick. You know? All right. So all of our food has arrived, Sam with the legendary quesadilla. Quesadilla tacos. Anytime I see birria on a menu, I'm just like going for it. I feel like that's Me good. too, usually. I went with the enchiladas. Um, I got one chicken, one pork, and one duck. Which is which? I do not know at this point, but I will figure out as I eat. We also got as an appetizer. The chicken flautas, which look amazing. I've never had flautas that stood up like that. I feel like they're usually like... I feel like I've seen them stand up before, but... I have not seen them stand up, but there's some cabbage and some cheese on top. They're super crispy tortillas. Chicken inside. And I think queso fresco. Yeah. Well, chicken, queso fresco, cabbage, cheese. So good. Remember the rolled chicken tacos from Taco Bell? Yeah, these are like a better version of it, I'm assuming. Like they were, those were like a million times better. Like, that's what this is. It's the, the tortilla, the crisp on this tortilla is amazing. It's so good. One out of ten. I could just eat this. I can't wait to try it. I'm going eight. 
looks like the lowest they've got so far is seven. This might be our new favorite Mexican spot in Disney World. All right, so these things, I really want to try one of these, Sam. So already right off the bat, so we actually really like the quesadilla at the Four Rivers Cantina food truck at Disney Springs. Yes. Super delicious. But those, remember how messy and greasy those were and they would just fall apart? Like this stays together really nicely. Even after it's dipped in the consomme. And the dip. Whatever, however they're frying the stuff, it's really good. It doesn't have a greasy taste and it has a really good structure to it. Oh, look at that cheese. <laughs> Let's try it out. Hype me up. What do you think? I love it. The meat is flavorful and tender. The shell, the shell really gets me. The shell on that too. All these shells you're saying are like really well fried. Yeah, not. It's not greasy, and it's just it's so delicious. The crunch, the melty cheese, the birria. I'm gonna go nine. Wow, they've gotten two nines so far. Yeah, this, I think this is our new favorite Bex, Bexan spot in Disney, but I have yet to try these enchiladas. All right, so I've already tried this rice, Sam. It's so flavorful. That's the Mexican rice, yeah. I'm assuming? That's a big bowl of rice. That came with your... Mm -hmm. Put a little bit in the sauce. I should have probably read the description. We'll put a lower third in, but I'm just gonna eat, figure it out as I go. Hopefully my palate is refined enough to figure out which is which. <laughs> I think it is. Oh, so this is definitely beef. I think this is beef, this is duck. Yeah, I was right? gonna say the darker one looked like it would be the duck. Yeah. All right, so this is gonna be a little tough cut. We got it out though. Honestly, like everything is- That's definitely beef, right? Yeah. We'll see. That has to be beef. It tastes like it's quesadilla inside, and I know what you mean about the shell. The shell is incredible. Let me try the darker one. Next. Yeah, the shell is like, look how crispy this is, Sam. Like, it's tough. But also, it, it, like, it holds everything together well. Yeah. When you have like a, like a structurally sound shell, I feel like it makes a difference in mm -hmm. what you're eating. That's the duck? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like that would be duck. Like the mole sauce with that complements almost the gamey nature and taste of the duck. Wow. Let me try the chicken out now. I'm gonna try one of each, right? I really, this is definitely my new favorite oh, spot. Mm. <laughs> That's chicken? The meat's still, my meat very tender, flavorful. Good sauce, good shell. Yeah, no, almost perfect ten, nine. Like each of the sauces complements the enchilada. Now this is a sampler. You can get three of one or three of the other. But with the sampler, it's a little bit more. You can get pick one of each one that you want. Um, I think these are really good. My favorite one I think is the duck, and the beef, and the chicken. But all delicious. All really good. Each flavor complements the other one. The spiciest one's probably the beef. The more tame one is the chicken. But. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go nine. Probably one of my favorite enchiladas I've had, and it's not like super bean heavy. I love enchiladas that throw like tons of refried beans on my stomach. I don't think I'm gonna have that big of a problem tonight. Speaking of stomach, did you take your IV guard? I did. All right, dessert has been served. Sam actually got the signature house-made churros. To the chocolate mole and a raspberry Guajilo sauce? I think you said that right. I would definitely not say that right. So that's interesting. It's a different take on, you know, churro sauce. So I'm interested to see how it is. I don't know if I'm gonna love the spice, but. See how, they, how well they dip. Viscous chocolate. What? Viscous is like watery, viscous. Uh, I thought you said hibiscus. I was like, what? Oh, that's so 
Sullivan. Yeah, these look, they were, how do they compare to the churros at um, Three Bridges? Because they also have a house-made churro with a chocolate dipping sauce. Those churros at Three Bridges have like a special kind of sugar on them that I do really like, and it's a good sugar. I can't think of the name, it's like Esperella or something. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think so, yeah. These are amazing churros, but honestly, this chocolate mole, I'm not someone who likes spice. It's not like too spicy and like you it's chocolatey but then there's just like this little kick of the spice that's so good. I love this place. <laughs> One out of ten. That is so good. I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna stick with the eight. Okay. I think that's I think that's it's good to say conservative because you don't want to go too crazy. Really these are amazing jars. Crispy, sugary, but this sauce like is incredible. All right, Sam. Signature flan. Oh, you said you, you said it right before you were saying flan. Can I can I order the flan? Island Long Island, Long Island. I am so shook right now by that sauce. <laughs> that was delicious. Um, so it's made for like hours. I'll put a little third it's in. It's made for hours? Yeah, and look, oh, well, is it still here? Oh yeah, it's good. Um, so, it's a Mexican classic. Our vanilla infused flan is baked slowly for hours over a gentle heat to ensure a rich and creamy texture topped with a light caramel sauce. It isn't a pool of sauce. It is a J dessert. All right, let's see, let's see how it breaks. It's definitely got a flanny texture, you know? Let's see, oh, look at that goo. Goo, it's a wet goo. Yeah, goos are normally wet. Mm. Oh. That's so interesting. The thing about flan is you have to like flan. It's a very... It has a distinct... Texture. Yes. Uh, it's, this is not super sweet. The thing is, it really is, and when they said light caramel sauce, I wasn't sure what they were hinting at. It is a light caramel sauce. It looks light. It yeah. doesn't look like thick. But it complements the flavor of the flan very well. It has almost a, like almost, it, it tastes almost alcoholic, but not like alcoholic. It's like, it was like a bitterness almost to the caramel. And the crust on the flan has distinct texture. I'm not a huge flanner. I feel like flan is like a Mexican cheesecake. Yeah. I probably like cheesecake more, but I still really like this. I'm gonna give it a, a seven. Like flan, Can I would you? usually probably give a three or four to. Like this seven for me for flan is very high. It's good. It's good. Have one of my churros. I'm going to. I want to. You didn't try this sauce. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about that one with the spice, but I really need you to try the chocolate mole because like. It's like a high-end, like raspberry jelly. The tartness goes so well with the sweet churro. The churros are good too. Do you agree with my eight? That's an eight. Desserts are good. Yeah, I would agree with your description. The eight category. It's very crunchy on the outside, soft on the inside. Both of the sauces are unique, yet highlight the and essentially flavor of the churro in their own way. Just a, a great and solid dessert. Both desserts are really good. All right, so that is it for our time. Dining at Rosa Mexicano at Walt Disney's, or I guess the Marriott's Dolphin Resort, is it the best Mexican food on Disney property? Yes. <laughs> I don't have any hesitation. I would even put this in a top five of all. Disney no, yeah, I, I agree. Um, I, I would say that, uh, so last night we were at uh, Roundup Rodeo Barbecue in Disney's Hollywood Studios. This was like the exact opposite experience <laughs> of that uh, because that was very immersive in regards to like the theme. Whereas here it's more of like a modern decor, almost, um, 
a relaxed type of atmosphere. You don't need to pick wear a collar. I saw people in like t-shirts in there. Uh, but the food was just such high quality, high caliber, which I didn't feel we got at Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. The food here was definitely, like you said, some of the best I've had on Everything. Disney property. Yeah. Drinks, appetizers, entrees, desserts. Yeah. They nailed everything. I thought the service was amazing. I am praying that the algorithm will push this video out <laughs> because I really hope that people come here. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to get the Disney theming here. Yeah, but so you it are doesn't gonna feel get... like Disney, but it does feel yeah. like you're at a very good restaurant. And the food is some of the best I've had on Disney property for sure. Yeah. Um, so this in Frontera Cucina, uh, Frontera Cucina being the restaurant, Rick Bayless's restaurant in Disney Springs, those I would say are the top two Mexican restaurants in Disney. I had a better experience with the food here, although I am not downing Rick Bayless and his amazing celebrity chef cuisine. It was amazing there too. It's just that that's how good this restaurant was. Um, is it my California grill level? Very close, but no. I still put Top Linos Terrace above it, but it's definitely, like you said, within that top five it's category. Top five. Um, especially for like the dishes that we had, their exclusive eats. Um, and I mean, the Dolphin itself is just a very picturesque resort. With the water fountains, the chandelier as you walk right in. Uh, and it, it was a great time with great service, right? Yeah, amazing service. And they have a breakfast, too, that I kind of want to come back. Yeah, so we hear the breakfast is very good. So we may be coming back for another video on the breakfast. What's the may be coming back? <laughs> we will be coming back. <laughs> and, and, like, it, I would 100% come back for dinner. Definitely, if we had, like, friends or family in town and we wanted to impress them. Because sometimes people think, you know, Disney restaurants, oh, they don't have good you know upscale dining or, well i think you know, they do but yeah fine. i mean but there are people who like look down yeah. on like theme park resort restaurants and things this is the one of the places that i would take them i agree if you enjoyed the content please like and subscribe liking will really help our channel grow it pushes this video out into the stratosphere of the youtube algorithm helps other people find the video subscribing it also helps our channel grow hit the bell notification so that way you're notified every time the videos come out which is wednesday every monday and thursday at 12 yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Don't count the days. We, make the days count. we will see you next time. That's all, folks. There's like a little water show that happens out. I didn't even realize it's like it changes <laughs> colors, that fountain outside. We've only been to this resort one other time. Yes. It is super beautiful and it smells so good in here. I it's would like, like to stay here. Resort. Yeah. We kind of like tucked behind. But it's like fancy trees. fun. It's not like fancy Grand Floridian where you feel like it's stuffy. I like the Grand Floridian, but yes, I it like is the stuffy. Grand Floridian, but you know what I mean? Like it's fancy fun. You notice like the look at the water on the ceiling, Sam. Ah, it's it's like Taylor leaner. Swift when she dives into the water at the concert and swims to the other side. There you go. Stage. There you go. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. No, Fine. people who are Taylor Swift fans know, and I know because if you're a Swifty, I'm married to a Swift. Comment below. <laughs>